Can we do it over a cup of coffee? Or? Yeah. Are we, are we running? Yes. Wow. Yeah, we're running. Well, you know, I'm, I've had the song in my heart and it's quite a... It's from the New Testament to Corinthians. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. The thing about this song that that really gets me is you know the light's not shining into the darkness the light is shining out of the darkness you know so to, to put it in a in another way it's like saying you know god turning your ne your negative into a plus you know if, imagine if if, you, if everything's closed and nothing can get in there you know like sometimes we, we're hiding away from god you know we we're trying to hide away in darkness, away from the Lord. So, because we are in our guilt, we in our sin, we in our <clears throat> failure, we we in all these things, and we're hiding away in there because then we think God can't get us. You know what I mean? So we think if we look in there, it's pitch dark in there because we're really keeping everything out. You know, but then God says, "Light shines out of darkness." You know, so you kind of looking, the light shining out of here. You know, how the heck the light got in there? You know, because I had it all dark, you know, and how, how did it get in there? It shines out of darkness, not into darkness, you know. And it's like a man sitting in his sin, you know. He sit in his guilt. And, uh, you, you know, he sit, he sit in his brokenness. And, and somehow, you know, he sits in the brokenness and he sits down in the hole, down in the pit at the bottom of the pit, and he sits on his own there, you know. And he doesn't want to know anything about God because he's guilty, you know. And, 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 he's, and he's condemned, and, and he's, he sits there in his bottom of his pit. And, you know, as he sits, he looks, he says, but there's something next to him in the pit, you know. And then, look, he says, but it's Jesus, you know, in this horrible pit. He said, what, what are you doing here, you know? He said, no, you're here, so I thought I'll come down here, you know. Come and, come and visit you here in your, in your brokenness. Come visit you in your, in your sin, you know. I'll come sit here with you and, uh, you know, just to be with you, you know, because I love you and I want to be here with you. You know, all of a sudden, you know, that dark place, you know, like light shines out of darkness, you know, because God turns your failure into a future, you know. He turns your mistakes into a mission, you know. It, it turns your negative into a plus because he brings you from that place. And, you know, the, the moment Jesus inhabits or comes into our place, it's changed. It's not the same anymore. Because when he's there, it all changes, you know. As God commanded light to shine, commanded light to shine out of darkness. We shone in our hearts, and our hearts are places of real, you know, you know, what it says in the Old Testament, you know, the heart of man is desperately sick and you know, it's like a dark place, you know. God's not God's not in there, you know. But Jesus came, he became a man, and he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, you know, in our own likeness, you know, like what? Yeah, in our own likeness, he came to be a man, just like us, in the likeness of sinful flesh. And he visited us in our perversion or, you know, horribleness, you know, he visited us. He was shown in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of God, uh, the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. So, you know, <clears throat> the word knowledge, you know, you know, from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis, you know, they ate, from, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, it can't help you, you know, because you know what's right, you know what's wrong, but, but you can't do it, you know what I mean? You know you shouldn't do the wrong, but you do it, you know? You know you should do the right, but you don't do it. Why? Because you, you, you're like a slave, you sold as a slave to sin and you're stuck. In your bondage, you're not going to do it. You know, you know what you must do. You're not going to do it. Then you even condemn. Then you even do it less because the more condemned you are. You know, you just sink down into the pit to give the light of the knowledge of what? Not of good and evil, of the glory of God. That's a that's a step up eh? from the knowledge of good and evil. Now we have the knowledge of the glory of God. But hang on, it's not divorced. From Jesus, in the face of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of God, there's a relational knowledge here, because the knowledge 
is in the face of Jesus Christ. What do we see in the face of a man? You know, you can see a man's body is he's like a strong, you know, he's got some big muscles there, you know, he's well built or whatever you see in his body. But the face tells you what he's thinking. His face tells you his attitude towards you. His face tells you his disposition towards you because you see the face. And that's where, that's where we, you know, we, he cuts us deep, you know, because he looks at you. And when Jesus looks at you, you know, like, wow, you know, I mean, you know, we know the story of Peter and his failure when he really failed. And Jesus looked at him and loved him. What was that look, you know? What was the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ at that moment when Peter was there in the snake pit and he failed in his own fear and he failed in his own cowardice, you know? And yeah, there he was. But that when, when that face looked at him, you know, and just the look of it, it says, you know, he's, he was cut to the heart and he went out and wept bitterly, you know, because... Yeah, somehow that gave him, it gave him so much more than just knowledge, you know. It gave him comfort. He was convicted. He knew he was loved. He wasn't condemned. And it's, it's a whole mixture of things, you know. So that's just what we get from the face of Jesus Christ, the glory of God and the face of Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus, he's not perplexed, you know. He's not out of a place of peace. He's at peace, you know. He's seated at the Father's right hand. He's at rest. And yet he's not separated from our lives and our brokenness. And he's calling us from our frantic, whatever we are in, to a place with him where we can see in his face and that can give it comfort to let go of those things that are, that are bugging you and troubling you. Let go of your fears. Let go of your anxieties. Let go of your pursuits, you know. Let go of your ambitions. Let go of all these things. Just look. You know, there's something way more glorious in the things you're pursuing. I mean, you know, you get to the top of the worm pile, it's just more worms, you know. I mean, there's nothing at the top there. It's it's just a, a broken bit all the way to the top. Okay, so you're at the top. At the top of what, you know? Top of the worm pile, you know. Oh, look, you know, find um, in the face of Jesus Christ. Then he says, but we have this amazing treasure, you know, in earthen vessels, you know. Uh, so the thing about an earthen vessel, it's not glorious at all, you know. It's it's not it's like a it's not a like a pretty ceramic vessel. It's just a earthen vessel, you know. And uh, I guess it's got some cracks in it because I mean this vessel's got even got a couple of cracks in it, you know. Got some. Burnt bits where it's been in the fire over here, it's black over there, you know, and it's like, ah, oh, it's an earthen vessel. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Sometimes you look at people, you know, and you can just see the vessel, you know, and you may be offended by the vessel. But if you look beyond the vessel and you look inside, you think, wow, you know, how can this treasure be in this vessel, you know? I mean, this guy, look at his face. He looks like down and out and broken. But when he speaks, my word, you know, there's some gold coming out of there. It, it doesn't quite make sense. You know, God says, not many wise, not many noble. You know, God has not chosen all these great people to be his disciples. You know, God's chosen the weak things, the, you know, the things that despise, the things that are not. God has chosen so that we may know that it's him. Because you look at the vessel, it can't be the vessel. There's something else going on here. It's got nothing to do with this guy. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. But the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We need to know, so lest we, you know, that become conceited in our, you know, it's me, you know, you know it's not you. I mean, you know those times when, when God works in spite of you, you know, when, when your failure is so in your face and God's working through you, you say, oh, can God work through me now, you know, I, I'm so... I'm so horrible, you know, and yet God's still using me and working through me. Anyway, <clears throat> and yes, the next part, you know, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. So you got you can break us down into two sides, you know. On the one side, you're hard pressed, you know, but which is the greater side? 
not crushed or hard pressed. Who controls the pressure, you know, so that hard pressed but not crushed? So we can live out of the, oh, well, I'm really under a lot of pressure, you know, and life is horrible, you know. Or you can live out of the other part and say, hey, listen, I'm not crushed, you know. You know, I know I'm hard pressed, but God's keeping me, you know. In the midst of all this fire, I see grace in my life. A grace that is beyond my understanding. There's something here keeping me over here. And I acknowledge God in his keeping power, you know. And when I see this not crushed, I have hope. Because, you know, whatever, whatever God's bringing onto my life, it's on a leash, you know. can only go that far. He's not going to crush me. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You know, God doesn't spare us from being perplexed, you know. God wants those pressures to come on us. Because it's, it's when it's above measure, beyond ourselves, when it's over above our ability, that we turn to God. Because otherwise we just continue in ourselves, you know. I can be this. I can do this, you know, I'm fine with this. You know, I, I've got resources, I've got all the... But now, you know, you're out of resources. <laughs> you, you, you're, out of, you're out of natural hope, you know. You're out of all these things. And now you turn to God, you know. We're perplexed. But now, all of us turn to God, you're not in despair, you know. Because you don't know how, but you know God's going to get you through this, you know. He's going to keep you. He's going to do something. You know what He's going to do. But if you look back in your life, you can actually look and see... He's done it so many times before, you know. He has not changed. He'll do the same thing again that he's done all along. God's not going to change. He will do the same thing. Let me get this <clears throat> Persecuted, but not forsaken, you know. Um, well, you know, where we are in the West, we're quite lucky we're not that persecuted, you know. We get some criticisms here and there, you know. Our persecution is different, you know. It's more like in the realm of temptation and all those things. But there are people who are really persecuted, but not forsaken. You know, God has not forsaken them. Um, so, I guess, you know, in that place, when you, uh, when you really feel alone, you know, and God draws near to you, you know, and you're aware of His presence and you're aware of His grace, you know, it's so powerful. Um, we, we, we spoke in the beginning about the glory of God in the face of Christ, you know. And I mean, how many testimonies have we heard of people in that position when the grace of God in their lives had just been unbelievable, you know. You think, how did they make it, you know? How did they go through this persecution? I mean, I know we ourselves, some of us think, you know, I'm fine, but I, I don't know what I'll be like under persecution, you know. Will I, will I manage? You know, will I survive? Will I stand? Will I deny my faith, what will I do, you know? Because I don't even know my own self, you know. If there's enough pressure, enough difficulty. There was Peter, you know, he was so confident of himself. But what happened to him, you know? And where am I at, you know? So, persecuted, not forsaken. You know? He will not forsake us, you know. And I mean, I guess even Peter failed, but he did not forsake him, you know. He still um, struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. So that bit of being handed over by God to an exact measure that he knows, you know, God's handing us over unto difficulty, unto perplexities, unto persecution, but not out of control with just to that place that God trusts his work in our hearts. To keep us. And he's not trusting us. He's trusting his work in our heart. To work faith in us. To work a belief system in us. Where. You know. We are, we are transformed. And we, we are. We are changed. Into the likeness. Of Jesus Christ. This is that the life. The life of Jesus. Also may be, may be manifested. In our body. You know. So. With, without that. We stay in the flesh. You know. Because. The flesh is just the dominant thing. It takes the vice <laughs> and it takes the, the rod. It takes whatever it takes to bring us to a place where we're not relying on ourselves, you know, because that's 
I guess our condemnation is we're just so self-reliant, you know. Um, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. Well, that's quite something. It's not, it's not just a spiritual thing. Now it's becoming part of your mortal, your mortal being, you know, because that grace moves into your existence here and you're beginning to manifest those qualities of Christ that can only come out of difficulty and out of the fire and out of whatever else God decides to work in your life. Because it's God who works in you, you know. I mean, God's handing you over. Are always delivered. We are being delivered. Are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. Who's delivering us over? God, del- God says, okay, you know. It's like Job. He said, okay, you can but you know, take his life, eh? you know. Or you can take all this, and, but you, know, you leave him alone, you know. So it's good to know that place where God's saying, Hey, listen, this is not, this is not a, a free-for-all, you know. You've got a ticket, but the ticket only goes to there. there on, it's, that's mine. You're not taking that, you know. <clears throat> because God's confidence is in that bit that's left there, left over, you know. <clears throat> and uh, the end of the song then says, so then death is working, you know. God put death to work. You know? How's death like? Working, you know. It's working in us. Working in us, but a life in you, you know, so God's that working, you know. Who can put death to work, you know? Death is a destroyer. But now death's like sweating, you know. I mean death's like working out here. Because God shines light out of darkness, you know. God turns horrible things into amazing things, you know. Don't we just serve such an amazing God? Isn't it just so amazing to belong to Him and to, to just realize, you know? Things are not out of control. It may look like it, but hey, <laughs> you know, every morning you get up, there's a beautiful flower outside, you know. It's still flowering, you know. It hasn't stopped. The sun's still rising, you know. It's lovely sunshine, you know. It's a new day. Here we are, you know. You, you look around, you know. There's still some people who love you and care about you, you know. God has not forsaken you, you know. God is still with you. So, yeah, things may pile up, but if you just open your eyes and you live out of that other part, you know, the not crushed part, the not forsaken part, you know, we live, we, we can live out of that part. Then, then that grows, and the other part becomes not so important anymore, because we're living at the bottom of the barrel, like the you know, like the widow, you know, whose flower was at the bottom, you know, but it never stopped. We, we're living out of that place, and after a while, you know, you get quite used to it, you know. In the beginning, you're quite scared. It's quite scary, you know, because this thing is empty, you know, and you're born and you're coming out, you know, like where's it coming from? But if you keep pouring, you see, wow, you know, this is a, this is really amazing. This is a, wow, this is amazing, you know. So God's working in our lives, you know, and I just think at this time, people need to to focus, you know, they need to focus away from themselves. And just to say, well, you know, God's in charge of all this. He warned us about us. He told us about these things. Now they're happening. Here we are, you know. We're in His hand. We're in His hand, in His keeping, for His time, under His control, under His provision, which is still there if you look. It's not gone. It's still there. You know, whatever provision it may be, there's still God's provision. Acknowledge Him and He will increase. He will increase your treasure, increase your, your wealth, you know. That wealth, not no money. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ But we have this treasure In earthen vessels That the excellence Of the power May be of God and not of us We 
are pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus. Always caring about in the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life, the life of Jesus, also may be manifested in our body, in our body, in our body. That the life, the life of Jesus, also may be manifested in our body, in our body, in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life, the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh, in our mortal flesh, in our mortal flesh. That the life, the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh, in our mortal flesh, in our mortal flesh. So then death is working. Death is working in us, but life in you. Death is working in us, but life in you. So then death is working. Death is working in us, but life in you. Death is working in us, but life in you. So then death is working. Death is working in us, but life in you. Death is working in us, but life in you. So then death is working. Death is working in us, but life in you. Death is working in us, but life in you. Death is working in us, but life in you.